We are living in a day and age field where we have seen the Me Too movement greatly affect the world of finance, entertainment, media, and we've yet to see it have the type of dramatic effect in the NFL that it's had in other aspects of society. This sort of feels like this has now come home to the NFL. A little late with some of the cases involved in the league in the past, mm -hmm. but it has now arrived at the doorstep of the NFL. And the NFL is trying as best as it can right now to clean up and make sure that this situation is handled in its eyes properly. Now, I know Tony Busby mentioned some of those facts, but the NFL has maintained that it interviewed 12 of the 24 plaintiffs and it requested permission on the other 12 or those other 12 did not want to speak to the NFL. So there's Tony Busby's side and there is the NFL side. But the fact of the matter doesn't change is that the NFL now certainly seems to be trying to make sure that this issue gets the attention it deserves. Yeah, man, look, in, in this kind of situation, I mean, obviously, it's very wise. It's the right thing to do. It is the just thing to do to make sure that you are crossing all T's, dotting all I's, getting as many accounts as much testimony, as much information as possible. And Adam, as you allude to, there's Tony Busby's mm -hmm. side, there's the NFL side. As far as whether or not they did their true due diligence to really get to the bottom of what happened, and we weren't privy to it, so we won't ever know that. But we do have, obviously, the reaction of Ashley Solis, who looks there to be very pained, shook, mm -hmm. traumatized. And I think there would be many, many other, there's many, many other people out there who would agree that that's what that looks like. This is, you know, I understand that, look, th this, is a tr this is a human rights issue. This is a, this is a human being issue. This is a human relationship issue about the treatment of women in particular here as it relates to sexual assault. And it's just, it, it's just amazing to me that I, look, that the, these kind of situations in the past as it relates to the NFL has, have always been handled have always been handled retroactively, meaning, well, let's just see what reaction is, and then we'll adjust. Let's see what reaction is, and then we'll adjust. Let's see what reaction is, and then we'll adjust. And obviously, we all know in the NFL, especially in this particular case as it relates to the greater the talent, the greater the tolerance, right? Mm -hmm. Because now I'm referring to this $230 million contract that this young man got in the face of these allegations before it was even settled. 230 million fully guaranteed contract. Hmm. And now there's an uproar over whether or not the number of games that obviously that he's going to miss and whether or not that was enough. It's just, there's so many just, there's just such, it's hard for me to really articulate, articulate this in any other way than I have in the past couple of days in talking about that. That is just extremely disappointing. It just all seems extremely reactionary. And the, look, as Judge Robinson pointed out, and I'm going to say this over and over again, the NFL needs to be a little bit more proactive. They need to get out ahead of things in terms of their personal conduct policy, the language in which it contains, and the way in which, is it, in which it is administered for players, owners, front office executives, anyone who falls under its jurisdiction. It needs to be put in writing. It needs to be very clear. It needs to be spelled out. You will suffer the consequences if you run afoul of this personal conduct policy. And there is no wiggle room. There is no, there, there's no after the fact in terms of us having to come back and clean it up because we are taking a beating in the court of public opinion. They need to be out ahead of this kind of thing. They have the ability to be out ahead of, the, of this kind of thing. Mm. They need to decide if they want to be out ahead of this kind of thing. Yeah, and I said this yesterday that, that this goes beyond football. The, the game that we that we love and watch and, and that I played, it, it's a human thing, and, and you want to do the right thing. The NFL has to do the right thing. Yeah. And yesterday, when that when we were talking about the six games, that's obviously obviously not enough. So they go in and they they're trying to do the right thing, but there's a lot of questions here that I don't know the answers to, and and I don't know the details of that we need to find out, and the NFL needs to find out and do the right thing here, and. Just because you can throw a football and you make a lot of money doesn't mean you get a pass and you sweep it under the rug. Mm -hmm. Things need to be addressed and you need to do the right thing. Uh, as we know, the NFL is appealing the six-game suspension of Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. And as of just a little while ago, we also know it'll be Peter Harvey who will serve as the appeals officer in this case as appointed 
by Roger Goodell. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.